Universidad Federal Fluminense, and he's going to speak on Yamabe um, type problem on many folks with Mandarin. Okay, so uh, thank you for inviting me. Thanks for the for all the conference. So I'm gonna do a little survey on this Yamabe type problems on many folks with boundary. And I start with the classical Yamab problem, which is for closed, closed Riemannian manifold. That means compact without boundary. And the question is whether you can find a metric in the same conformal class such that the scalar curvature is constant. Okay, this is an extension of the uniformization theorem for Riemann surface. And a positive answer is given after a series of papers. Uh, there's uh, four papers, very important contributions for, for the field. And the answer is yes. And for manifolds with boundary, let's consider this problem proposed by Escobar. Uh, it says that if it's possible to find a scalar flat metric, a conformal metric, but scalar flat and with a, a mini curvature on the boundary, okay? So let me give a little motivation for this. So have the Riemann. Riemann mapping theorem. That says that if you have a proper domain of the complex plan, and so proper, and it's simply connected. Proper, this means it's not the whole thing, okay? So this is holomorphic. Holomorphic to a disk, okay? So this is dimension two. So when you try to extend this to higher dimensions, uh, Let's assume now have a domain again in Rn. And now suppose it's compact. In this case, if this is conformally equivalent to the, to the ball, that would be the model for us now, uh, the, you only get the balls themselves. So that by the Liouville theorem for, for conformal transfer, transforms of Rn, okay? So, the natural question uh, from the differential geometry point of view is to find a metric which is scalar flat like the ball and has constant mean curvature on the boundary. So kappa will be the mean curvature, okay? Uh, another possible question is to ask for, uh, it's more similar to the, to the Yamai problem to ask for minimal boundary with constant mean curvature, uh, constant scalar curvature inside, okay? So those two problems were proposed by him. Let's call this problem one and this problem two. I'll be interested in both, okay? Of course, there is, uh, you can ask for constants, non-vanishing constants here, but uh, I'll concentrate on those, on those, uh, on this problem, okay? So, in analytical terms, let me just give the model here. So the model for this case, I said, it's the ball. And the model for this other case, just to keep in mind, is the hands here, right? So in, uh, in analytical terms, uh, the equations for, we have the equations and the equations for the mini curvature and the scalar curvature are those. you choose this exponent in order to cancel out some terms here, gradient terms, so get a, um, a nicer equation with a nonlinearity here and also on the boundary for the mean curvature. And, okay, so problem one, so here goes problem one, is written this way. 
okay? Because now uh, scalar curvature is zero. So get a nonlinearity on the boundary. Okay? Uh, I'll go back to the equations. Uh, in variational terms, you can write this in terms of this functional. This is the, uh, the geometric functional. It's a scalar curvature, an integral, plus the, mean, the integral of the mean curvature, and you are dividing this by the area with some power here. Okay, it's a kind of normalization. And here, in terms of the conformal factor, okay, you get this exponent here. It means the following. So consider H1 of M, this is embedded on the boundary, 4K less than or equal to, let's call 2 prime, this critical exponent, okay? Below this critical, this is compact, the embedding is compact, but it's only continuous for the critical one, and this is the critical one, okay? This minus one gives the uh, previous exponent, okay? Uh, okay, but for problem two, here's problem two, you have to normalize by the volume with a different power, and this power is the one that goes here, we consider the sub-left embedding on LP from H1 to LP, and then P, the critical exponent in this case is 2N over N minus 2. And that goes here when you use the volume, okay? So for the second problem, the nonlinearity is in the interior, okay? Okay, so there is this conformal invariant, which is the female on the conformal class. And this is al always bounded by the functional of the ball. So, like I said, here's the model, is the ball. For the second problem, the model is the hemisphere. So for the second problem, the bound will be the hemisphere, okay? If you have the strict inequality uh, like this, you have solution to the problem. That's pretty much like the classical Yamai problem. The only thing here that's different in this case is that this functional may not be bounded from below, okay? Uh, but it's an, uh, to be bounded from below is a necessary condition to solve the problem. So we don't lose anything by assuming this, okay? If you normalize by the volume, you don't have this problem. Okay? And see, so this strict inequality was proved in some works, series of papers. Uh, I'll mention this last one. It's the, the last one uh, using this type of technique. It's a reduction to uh, I, I mean, the problem was reduced to the, rem to the uh, positive mass theorem, okay? And, they, and she used, uh, Sophie Chen, she used test functions inspired by Breno's work on the Yamab flow. I'll talk a little bit about those test functions. Let me just mention that there is another approach uh, topological methods by Meyer uh, and Diane. I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the, this name. This, this one's difficult. And without the use of positive mass theorem. So let me just mention something about test functions, how they work. So you want, you want to prove a strict inequality, okay? So if you find a function, let's call this, uh, this is the previous function. So let's go back. 
this function, okay, in terms of u. So I'll put u here, this. <coughs> if you find q of u, or I mean u, such that q of uh, the energy, okay, that this function is, is strictly less than the one of the ball, then you have solution to the problem. So the point is to find, try to find a positive u satisfying this. Okay, and the way you construct this is, uh, first let me say that this ball is conformally equivalent to the hemisphere, I mean, sorry, it, 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 it is, but it's conformally equivalent to the, the half Euclidean space. So, <coughs> Euclidean half space, so the ball, so for problem one, instead of the ball, you work with the the half space. So let's call T X. So X has n minus one coordinates. This is R n plus, and then have this part. Uh, so if you pull back the metric on the ball, and pull back to to the Euclidean space, then the metric is this. This is the metric of the ball. And u is given by this expression. This function here, defined for the half space, okay? You use, uh, the idea is to use this function, u, it's near to capital U because uh, that's the one that gives the network of the ball and that's the, the right one to, the, of course, the natural one to use to compare with the geometry of the ball. So near to a certain point, a given point, you, not given point, you can choose the point x0 on the manifold, okay? You take coordinates, and then you write in coordinates using this function near to that point, okay? You use this, okay? Uh, away from this point, you use the green function of the conformal Laplacian. The conformal Laplacian is the, the one, is the operator, this operator, okay? And the green function, in this case, with this boundary condition, this is zero, okay? This is away from the point. Actually, yeah, yeah. So, so for this function, you don't need to shoot a positive Actually, you want some smooth, so there is a, let me show this. Where is the function? Okay. Uh, you have to put a uh, model. Okay, in order to define the function. If, it's, if it, you don't choose it positive, you can put the, the module, okay? Mm -hmm. On a positive function. Uh, could be any, yeah. But the thing is that when, when you want to put the module, then you get something non smooth if you try to. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, you get something non smooth. So, natural things try to get to use something smooth. I think that, that gets more complicated if you put uh, the model here and, and try to find a function which is not positive. And, and even because the model is something that's positive, so it's near to the model and the green function is also positive. So 
I don't think you're going to get some uh, if you don't use positive functions. It's a natural thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there is something that you do, yeah. And like I said, there is a positive mass theorem that's being used here. And the idea is to use a stereographic projection around this point, to take out this point, and then you do the stereographic projection to get something uh, asymptotically flat. And the mass is involved, uh, is used to prove this inequality. In case the geometry near x0 is too flat, I mean, if it's too near to the to the Euclidean space, then using you, it can, you can't tell the difference between the ball and the, your manifold. Okay, so if it's too flat, you uh, this plays a role. Okay. Okay, I'll be interested in two types of problems. First one, compactness of the whole, of the whole set of solutions. And the second one, Yamabe type flows. So natural flows for this type of problems. Okay. So compactness was a, uh, a question proposed by Shane, which consists in uh, if, the, if the set of solutions are, are, is compact, the whole set in the space of uh, solutions. So let me just uh, space of functions, sorry. Let me write the equation, yeah, and I'll talk about those hypotheses, okay? So the equation for, in this case, without boundary, is there is a certain constant. Okay, I know it's certain constant. This This is the Yamab equation for closed manifolds. Okay. And for, uh, okay, I didn't write this, this equation before, before, so it's here now. And, and the question is whether you can find a positive constant depending on the, the, the metric, but uh, such that. You can control all those solutions for all you as above solutions to the problem. So that was the question, okay? And so the first answer, I mean, the answer for the sphere is no. So that's why it's excluded here. Uh, this is because uh, like you have the ball here, let's use the ball here instead of the, of the sphere. So actually there is a family of solutions with epsilon. And they concentrate uh, a family of solutions. Uh, I mean, the ball can be represented by all those functions, okay? There is a, a scaling that you can do to preserve the equation. And here, if this is Rn plus at zero, the solutions concentrate U epsilon. So when epsilon goes to zero, it concentrates at zero. Uh, the same happens for the sphere with the appropriate function here. And so it, it, it's false for the sphere, okay, the result. Uh, and this quotient is positive. We're choosing positive. It, it, it's related to this, the sign, uh, it has the same sign of the Yamab invariant. Uh, and the point is that if it, it's negative, you have only one solution, okay? Uh, if it's zero, this is the linear problem. Uh, so the answer is that compactness holds 
up to dimension 24 by Kuri, Marx, and Shane, and then by Brandon, Brandon, and Marx, compactness fails in higher dimensions. Okay. What's behind this? Uh, okay, for let's say there is a, a there are cut, uh, there are other other counter examples, but they are non-smooth. Okay, so they are not C infinity. Hmm. So this problem is for uh, for smooth functions. Okay, the, the problem I, I'm talking about. So uh, the pro program that was proposed by Shane at the time was to use this Pohazai identity. Okay, you don't need to really uh, not be very interested in the, the, exactly the, the expression now. The only thing I, I want to mention is that there are boundary terms and there are interior terms. You get this equation by integrating by parts. Okay, and, and here is a difference between the the metric and the Euclidean metric. And from here, in terms of expressions of the metric in, uh, expression in, in coordinates, you get a, a certain, what, what they, they did is to find a, a certain quadratic form that's responsible for the compactness. I mean, if the quadratic form, uh, quadratic form in terms of the expansion for the metric in coordinates, okay? So in terms of the coefficients of the metric, there is a quadratic form, and it's positive definite up to dimension 24, and it fails to be positive definite in, in higher dimensions, okay? So, uh, so since compactness fails, the natural thing is to ask if compactness holds under some generic condition. And this result was previously obtained by Yan Yan Li and by, by Marcus uh, using uh, independently. And it says that the value tensor vanishes at the blow up point. So what's a blow up point? So when compactness fails, when compactness fails, you have this. The blow up. The blow up is when the maximum of a uh, sequence of solutions to the problem go to infinity. Okay, and the maximum is realized by certain points on the manifold. It's J. Okay, and you can assume it converges to a certain x bar. So if you write in terms of coordinates, the thing is that you can, uh, using the equations, you can prove that uh, u, the sequence u, gets closer and closer when you get writing coordinates, you use the Euclidean space. And it gets closer and closer to u of epsilon j. u is that function here for the ball, but it will change for the, the correspondent, co corresponding one for the sphere, OK? So what you have is concentration uh, at a certain point, and the, uh, uh, and the solution looks uh, more like uh, get closer and closer to the sphere. Okay, the expression also get, get some bubbles. Okay, and the picture for uh, this for this solution is, is like this. Okay, you get spheres. Okay, uh, at that point, the limit point, it's natural to expect that the value tensor is zero at this point because that happens for the sphere. Okay. So for manifolds with boundary, so let, let me just say, if it, you expect this and this happens in dimensions, uh, in almost all dimensions, okay? Okay, for manifolds with boundary, 
The question is for problem one. Remember, I, I put those problems. Uh, the first one is for scalar flat matrix. All the slides are regarding the, the, the first problem, okay? Uh, just to simplify it, otherwise it gets a bit confused. Confusing, okay? So, the problem for, for, for manifold with boundary, we consider the set of uh, scalar flat matrix, the conformal class, uh, with constant mean curvature on the boundary. So solutions to uh, an equation like this, actually uh, a set of equations is the one. Let me go back. Those equations here. Okay, a set of solutions to this equation. So the, the problem is the same, but you replace the Amab equation by this, uh, this problem. Okay, uh, again you have blow up for the ball. So the ball, the ball uh, uh, so I assume that the manifold is not conformally equivalent to the ball. Uh, the Amab quotient is positive, again for, for the same reasons. And the question is the compactness of this whole set of solutions, so we are trying to find a uniform bound, okay? So positive answer were given uh, by those previous answer, uh, by those two papers, okay, a locally conformal flat, a little special manifold because they are locally conformal flat and umbilic boundary. And the natural question is whether at that point was whether the, the trace free second fundamental form vanishes at a blow up point. That was the question. And the answer is yes. So, since we are working now with the ball, so the, the thing, so the problem is, okay, let me use white. Now the bubbles, they look like this. They look like balls. And there is a certain limit point. And now expect that the, the at this point, the, the boundary is umbilic at the point, so the trace-free second fundamental form vanishes. And the answer is yes. So if the manifold, uh, the trace-free second fundamental form doesn't vanish everywhere, then you have compactness, okay? This is the result that holds for almost all dimensions, okay? Okay, so where is it? okay, so the natural conjecture is whether it, if it's, uh, there is a critical dimension like uh, 25, uh, for, but for manifolds with boundaries, so for this problem, okay, uh, where compactness holds up to these dimensions. Uh, and a result that, uh, support this conjecture is that compactness fails in higher dimensions. Okay? And for problem two, remember problem one is R equals zero and the mean curvature constant. And problem two is R equals constant k equals uh, zero on the boundary. Uh, you have a similar question. And this question was answered by Curie, uh, Marcos Curie and, and Marcelo Disconzi. When the boundary is umbilic, so this, uh, the same situation, you, uh, they proved that, that, that the situation is the same when the boundary is umbilic, the same as the case of manifolds without the boundary, okay? So in this case, the, <coughs> you can have bubbles in the interior, like this, or bubbles that look like spheres on the boundary. 
Okay. So, well, well, how much time do I have? Okay, so it's, it's ten, minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, so I think I'm going to go to the flow, okay? Okay, let me move to the... Okay, so I'm talk about the flow or flows for this type of problems. So the, cla the, the classical Yamada flow was introduced by Hamilton for closed manifolds, okay? So it, uh, the, the flow goes according to this equation, okay? Uh, so R is the, like I said, the scalar curvature, and R bar is the integral of the scalar curvature divided is the average, divided by the volume, and this flow preserves the volume, okay, of the, uh, of the manifold. Uh, convergence of this flow was proved after, of course, there, there were some uh, previous results, but I mentioned this one by Brando, all those ones, two papers, and they used uh, blow-up techniques, like blow-up techniques to prove the, the convergence of the flow, okay? And a positive mass theorem. Okay, he also proposed, uh, he also proposed uh, a problem for manifolds with boundary. And this is the version. You keep the metric scalar flat, and you, you write an equation on the boundary using the mean curvature. So the mean curvature is the average of the mean curvature. Uh, and, and this flow preserves the, the area of the boundary. And here is the mean curvature. I, uh, it's the same that we had b before, but I'm not normalizing now, OK? So kappa or uh, one is the trace, uh, and the other is the normalized version. Unnormalized, uh, normalized. OK, so in terms of equations, you have this equation for the scalar curvature, the one I mentioned before, and for the mean curvature, this other equation. So let's try to write the equations for this flow. R is zero, so R is zero. Then you'll get the, the conformal factor is harmonic. So the behavior is determined by the behavior on the boundary. And for the second equation, you have this exp expression. Then you have uh, since we have H here, if you try to expand, then you get this equation using H, okay? And H bar gives this integral, okay? You can, ca you can get rid of this term if you, if you simply do a rescaling, okay? So uh, here is a Neumann derivative nonlinear, okay? So this flow, uh, it's similar to the parabolic flow, to a parabolic nonlinear flow, but it's not parabolic because the derivative is on the boundary, okay? Uh, and short time existence was proved by Brando, and long time existence in those cases, when the conformal invariant is non-positive, or for the positive case, which is the more difficult one, for locally conformer flat manifold with umbilic boundary, okay? And also there is this other version uh, uh, that we can call Yamab flow in this case because it, it's, uh, it's the Yamab flow inside the manifold, in the interior, and on the boundary you put minimal boundary condition, then you run the flow, okay? So we start with uh, uh, minimal boundary, okay? So this version is the natural one for the second problem. So the natural thing at this point, when I start to stu study this kind of thing, is uh, if, to see if the Brando's techniques for closed manifolds, uh, they work for manifolds at boundary, okay? And the answer is yes. Uh, so the manifold is not feomorphic to the unit ball, otherwise it's, it's, otherwise it's already covered by the, the uh, Brando's result. Then uh, proved long-time existence and convergence 
of the flow to a metric of constant uh, mean curvature, because that's the goal, okay? We are trying to find a metric here like this, okay? A scale of flat metric, okay? Using, again, a positive mass theorem. But in this case, it's a different version of the positive mass theorem. It's the one uh, where the manifolds are modeled not on the Euclidean space, but on the half Euclidean space. Uh, this is uh, uh, was studied by, by us, by, uh, by myself, Barbosa, and Levi Lima. Okay, and it, it uses, uh, actually this is, uh, this follows, uh, I mean, it can be reduced to the classical positive mass theorem. Okay, and to do this we use a theorem by Miao in a doubling argument, okay? Uh, so, uh, like I said, my slides are on the first version. For the second version of the MI problem, we also have a flow, the one with minimal boundary, okay? So the result's pretty much the same, okay? Uh, Less than five minutes, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let me just give an idea of what's involved. Like I said, we're, we use blow-up techniques, the ones that Brando uses for, for the flow. So we're trying to find an, an uniform bound like this. And it's just enough to, to use a C0 bound, okay? So we need to rule out the blow up. And the main tool for, manifold, for closed manifolds is the, is through the composition result that says that when you have, uh, when you have blow up, the, you have a certain number of points, uh, a finite number of blow up points where the solutions look like this a number of spheres, okay? They get closer and closer, number, a finite number of bubbles, okay? And this is in H1, okay? This is for palais mayo sequence. And for manifolds with boundary, have a similar result. One is due to Feli, not Feli, sorry, this is uh, Terracini. And Pierotti. Uh, is the uh, when when they proved that the the when you have blow up you have a situation like this okay in H one with a finite number of bubbles and and for this problem for problem one uh, we have the same result similar result for. Uh, manifolds with boundary where the solutions uh, look like balls, okay? So let me just state this, because I don't have time for this. So the, the results that there is a, a, a number of bubbles, solution, uh, functions that look like U, the symmetric function, plus a fixed, a fixed function, which is a solution of the, the limit equation, and then in H1, in H1 you have these conversions, okay? And uh, so the point is to rule out this uh, situation, okay? And the positive mass theorem is also involved in controlling the energy of those bubbles, okay? So we can stop here. We can go to the thank you part. <laughs>